KSM show. Hello, my name is Dr. Elsie Ifakovman, quiz mistress of the National Science and Math Quiz. You are watching the king of prime time, the KSM show. Keep watching. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're back. Eric, welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've been trying to get you for, for a long time. It has been a long time. It's been a long, long time. time. But yes. you're here today. Sure, sure. You're here today. Sure. So my brother who's out, I say KSM, I feel the member. <laughs> and so he's here. But it's fantastic, you know. Yes. One of the, the things that amazed me about you, yeah. um, when you came from Japan. Yes. I think it was in 97 or sometime back yes. there, you yes. know. Yes. What I heard yes. was that uh, you want to stay at the hotel in Osu. Yes. And then you look at the price that they charge you. Say, yes, ah, yes. Charge a small hotel, you know. Sure, sure, sure. And then based on that, you said, ah, then there must be opportunities in the hotel business in Ghana. Yeah, that's good. Based on how much they're charging me. Yes, yes. And that's how you started your first hotel, you're right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Give me a little bit of background. This is this is okay. Uh, in fact, with I greet the whole congregation, everybody who's watching us today, and a big thanks to you too. Yes, indeed, God has done a lot for me and my family. So uh, we should always praise the Lord for the things that he has done for us. The thing is, uh, that is 97, when I came to Ghana first, I was, uh, before coming, I wanted them to book a hotel for me because I was coming with my late wife, Japanese. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was told to pay $150 per night. And I was like, it's too expensive. How come Ghana hotel, $150? What kind of hotel is that? And when we got here, the hotel that we went wasn't extraordinary. Mm. And uh, because the nature of the work I do in the States and Japan, I used to travel a lot. So most of the time I stay in the hotels. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a place like New York, Manhattan, that is where hotels are very expensive. Besides that, when you go to Vegas, weekends, it's expensive. But otherwise... At that any ordinary day, it's very reasonable. Somebody can get a hotel for fifty dollars, sixty dollars, mm. and so forth. Mm. So how come Ghana? Hundred and fifty. Hundred and fifty dollars in those days, back in ninety-seven. And this was in ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. Hmm. So uh, the next morning, I walked down to the uh, the reception, and I was trying to interview from a lady at the reception. How come hotels is so expensive here? And the lady was like. Um, because there's no much hotels in the country. No, the first question was, how much is your salary? And he, she said, uh, he's on probation, something like that, and uh, he's trying to be there until somebody leaves a vacant be uh, comes there before they can employ her. So she was not getting that obvious in that. So she was not getting Maybe paid getting, or anything? Like, pay, they just give her uh, something so for the some, transport yeah, and so forth. Yeah. I was like, what? And I could see how efficient that lady was, that how she works meticulously. So I said, no. And then, what's the reason? He said, okay, because there is a lot of um, people who has learned or who has done hotel management course, but because there's not much hotels in the country, that is why he's doing that. Mm -hmm. So what? Mm -hmm. So it means that in Ghana, we have people who have the ability the skills to work for hotel, but because there's no hotels in the country, they don't have a place to work. Mm. So I got the idea that then I think one, I have the labor, so they will need the projects so that we can get things work. I also stayed in a hotel in Kumase, that one too, they were charging for $88. That hotel too had, uh, had uh, just, uh, I think 15 or 17 rooms. Mm. And in those times, you can count the hotels here in Accra and even the number of rooms that they have. Just a few rooms mm, and mm, it's mm. The, the demand was so high. Mm. So I said, okay. Then if so, it's better to build a hotel in my country <laughs> so that people coming from abroad will come and stay in your hotel. Stay, stay yeah. in the hotel. Yeah. So that was the reason why we came out with the Rata, Rata Hotel. Oh. <laughs> but, but is this just you have a business mind and you're always looking for opportunities or what? Because you go to a hotel, they are charging $150, so quickly your, the roller goes up and you have to find out how much you make if you get your own hotel. Yes. The and, thing is, you see, uh -huh. uh, for me, I always, wherever I go, I look at the cost and the way the things are put mm. up, things that goes around and how I can take advantage of that. And uh, you see, in Ghana, when you talk about uh, 
Ghana as my country. Mm. And we don't have... Okay, the first thing was, most of the guys in Japan, they were doing this... Um, I was so kind, bringing spare parts because Japan is linked with those kind of business. And I said to myself, no, this is my lie because I am a typical banker. So I can't go to a so can be selling spare parts and so forth. Most of my friends, that's what they were doing. So I was always looking for a work that I can do and do it on my standard. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. So when I came to Ghana, it was coming to find venues where we can explore it. Okay. And this okay. idea came out. So I was like, oh, it's God gift. It's God who's giving the directives. This is a good way for you to go. But indeed, when we set up the hotel, let's say we started in 2002. Erata at that time was the president for the first time. Oh, things was fantastic. Mm. Very, very good. Mm. Yes, everybody, people were chasing, coming. If you don't make reservations, you can't get a place to stay. Wow. And we're having like um, the least month percentage we have about 70%, 75%. Occupancy. We're hitting yeah. about 88, 90% occupancy in a month. That was wow. fantastic, yes. Wow, wow, wow. So the, the whole idea was uh, you swallowed that business opportunity the minute you went into that yes, hotel, hotel and paid that much yes, money. That say, oh, me, me see me that is, that's, true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, that's true. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, Irata was completed in what, 2002? We started okay. in, uh, we, we, uh, we bought the land at uh, 97 when i came we got the land uh, during the 97 end of the 97 and um, we were able to get the permit to build two years later mm. then we got a permit to build a hotel and uh we finished within 2002 and we started at least a little part of 2002 that's where we started mm. and mm. after that we we decided that okay now uh i like cars and i said okay if I'm doing hotel that started and things are moving on. For me, I don't like doing one business because if I look at one business, and maybe things go, but I cannot survive. It reminds always, you of something, somebody, so, sorry to cut you, uh -huh. but somebody said there's a difference between a businessman and an entrepreneur. Yes. He said, businessman yes. looks at one thing, this is going to be my business, and that's what the whole focus is. But an entrepreneur mm -hmm. is looking for opportunity everywhere. Yes. So that's you, eh? That's me. That's <laughs> me. Because I don't do one thing. I mm. know uh, there, will, there will be always bad t times in your businesses, some of the businesses. So if you don't have something to support, that is where things, when things get on bad, it affects you a lot. Mm. Yeah, so we, I decided that, okay, the second business that I will set up with is the cars. There's, I like cars. Have you always been interested in cars? Yeah, I love cars very much. Yeah. I love cars. So I said, okay, let me set up cars. We we're bringing cars in those days and giving it to the, the guys at the garages to sell. And when you bring it to them, they put so much margin. Mm. Car be sitting down. Mm. Nobody wants to buy it. And even lately, when I went there to visit some of them, the cars they bring, it's uh, accidental cars, they repair it, they fix it. So I said, no, a rider can come out with a garage that we have cars that has no accident, as in free cars, free and not flooded cars, clean title cars, that people can really enjoy it. That you know that you are value for money. Because a lot of people go to the garage, as far as the car can spark and it's moving, they think they've got a good car. Yes, but it's not that. There's much into it. Mm. So we set up a garage that is decent that people can come there and get what they want yes mm, mm, mm. so you started the irata motors because of your interest in cars sure. and but before then what you was bringing cars to ghana sure. to I, sell yes i was bringing cars to yeah to sell yes and so forth that's what i was doing mm. but because i didn't have the garage at that time i gave it to people who has the garages that they've been selling them yes uh-huh so the difficulties was like car will be sitting there for quite long you see, and sometimes you don't know how much they sell, they sold the car, they'll come and tell you oh, the car is sold and blah, blah, a whole lot of things. So now I decided, no, 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 then we have to set up our own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from there, we said, okay, we do, we, we started, uh, when, when we sell cars to a client at the Rata, what we do is that we'll, we, we, we service the car for the customer and the service needs oil. You need a uh, battery. You need big part. You need ties. And all these things, we're buying them from here, mm. the market. And I realized that most of the things that we buy are not helpful. Most especially the battery. A lot of batteries in town are fake. Mm. So when you buy the battery, within three months, you need another one. Four months, you spark your car, it's not moving. So it's like I was having so much complaints. And 
as we buy car batteries every day, let's say if you have a sales of 20 cars a month, it means that you need about 20 batteries. And customers who has who has bought car from you, if they are suffering from batteries, the problem. So we decided, no, 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 we have to locate batteries and oil that we can so sell. So the complaints them. were coming from your customers? Yes, complaints were coming from our customers. And so you, you go to where you bought it, and uh, they have nothing to tell you. They will charge you. They will do it. And still it doesn't work. So the hassling was so much. And we decided, no, 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 no. We have to locate a good battery and oil that we can uh, service our customers. Yes. And um, I think 2007, up to was it two years ago, yes, we went to Dubai. And in Dubai, with one of my boys, Kokosi, we sat in the taxi. It was a Camry. And that, that Camry has run almost this over 600,000 kilometers. 600,000 kilometers. We were, and I, we asked him, is it, how many times have you changed your engine? And the guy said, no, we haven't changed any engines. What? What's the secret? And he said, it's because of the frequent service of the uh, engine. So, ah, so what, engine, what oil is that? We realized that it's a speed made engine oil that the company uses to service their oil, uh, their, their cars. So that makes the car engine last. So okay. We find out where this oil is coming from, and it's from Korea. So we contacted them. I went to Korea and had this, sat down with them, that I need this oil to take to Ghana. So okay. Then they signed a contract with me. If you can sell this, and they introduced also the batteries that they have also to us. So we, we brought some in. That's so why the battery, when the, uh, the, the, the last, first event we brought in Ghana was about, this is about two years ago. Mm. And all the cars that we put the batteries on are working perfectly. Yes. That is when we started advertising and promoting it that people would know that if you indeed want a good battery, speed made battery is the best. And let me talk about the, the oil. You, need, you see, the oil, if you put oil in the car and you pack for the next day, you see that the all the oil in the engine would drain down. Good. And uh, if you have the synthetic oil in your engine, it means that when the, the whole oil in the engine would not drain, you always have some on the, uh, the springs and the uh, inside. The, uh, mm. yeah. So that in the morning... When but the regular oil, the regular the regular oil, oil will, drain. Will, drain, will drain? Will drain down. So but when the synthetic, you pack, the synthetic oil will always, always stay in. You have the oil always around the egg. Yes. So it makes it like a moist. But the regular oil would drain. So when it's like somebody who wanted to go to a place very quickly. So when whether you spark your car, you move it. That is where the engine starts smoking. And, because the, the wear and tear in the engine side will start smoking and those kind of things. But when you have a fully synthetic oil, like the oil that we have, when you spark the engine, you can go to anywhere you want. So that's a secret in the oil. Yes. Mm. And these oils that we brought in, a gallon of this oil, like this one, we just fully synthetic, four liters. Of course, you're just 100 Ghana cities. And when you buy this 100 Ghana cities with a with filter, about, let's say, an original filter of a Toyota would be about 60 Ghana. So 160, you change your engine oil, you change, you've got a perfect work to be done on your car. And... This, you can use it, depending on the miles, about four or 5,000 miles, yes, that you can use. So it, it means that we, the oil that we brought to Ghana is one of the best oil that we encourage that people should try to look for the oil and also look for the battery, yes. Or if you cannot look for it, you call us. Anytime you call us, wherever you are, you can deliver it. Especially the battery, wherever you are in Accra here, it's free delivery. We have location in Kumase. We are trying to locate... Areas. So you deliver? Yeah, we deliver. You deliver them. oil and deliver batteries? Yeah, yeah we, we deliver them, yes. We have the motorbike, they will quickly bring it to you yeah, when you call us. Or if you want, you come to the garage, we change everything for you there. And we do, we have the diagnostic machine too. So we do cross check on your machine, uh, car to know things that you need, and all, all these things will be uh, is, is done at the garage, yes. So it's like now, Errata Motors is one stop shop. When you come there, all these things can be done and you are gone, yes. Put your hands together, man. <laughs> <laughs>
yeah, yeah. But, but, but let, let me get a bit of your background. You know, you are never into a hotelier, and you are not into automobiles. When you were growing up, yeah, did you have what what ideas did you have growing up? How did you eventually end up in where you are? You know, let me go back to your childhood. What did you? Where were you born? Yeah, I'm I'm from Kumau, Kumau okay. in the Asante region. Okay. And uh, I, because my father was a teacher, so I stayed in, uh, let's say, we stayed a little bit in Ofuansi at the Asante region. We stayed a little bit at um, Kumau also, because my mother is from there. Mm. Good. And also a Sienimpon. So we stay a little bit over there, and finally we landed in uh, Keo and uh, in the Kumasi, mm. the Ashtown, and uh, that is where basically the elementary school and also the secondary school too. I came to Chubakudia Secondary School. That's where I schooled, and after that I had a chance of working at the bank for four years before traveling. Mm. But me per se, I'm a type of person who doesn't want to stay at a place without work. It any time in my time I try to take advantage of that and work. Because as a speaker right now, I know how to polish shoes, how to sew shoes, anything about shoe, I can do it. You learned that yes. in your childhood? Yeah, yeah, I like uh, yeah, I mean shoe shine. Oh yeah, shoe shine. Shoe shine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you should repair shoes as well. Uh, yes. Shoe shine shoe maker. There. Can you see, uh, that's where the belt is uh, the the uh, the more. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, that's where we're staying. Yes, we're doing the shoe shine. Yes, uh -huh. Kumasi Kajitia. Good. So I'm a Kumasi Kajitia boy who knows a lot of things. <laughs> and uh, I remember even at the school, um, Form 3 at the senior school, I, uh, during one of the terms, that's a long vacation, I was in Lagos for uh, about 70 days to, to work and make money. Yeah, mm. so I'm a kind of person who like working and so forth. What kind of work were you doing in Lagos? But, yeah, the shoe shine. Oh yes, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. You know, shoe shine is one of the best uh, job in in Lagos. Yes, mm -hmm. most of the guys who went there, they were doing the uh, waya and also the shoe shine was mm -hmm. one of the best mm -hmm. jobs. Mm -hmm. And most, some of them was also doing this by force mason and so forth. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, <laughs> that's back in those days. But you see, uh, my motive or what I really wanted to do when I was a child was to be. A custom officer. Custom officer? Yes. And there was two, three works. Banker. And uh, the third one was the uh, foreign affairs. Foreign affairs? Yes. You wanted to work in foreign, foreign affairs. affairs. That's the third <laughs> job. The reason why I was fantasized with this business, or this job, was that when I was coming from uh, uh, Nigeria, the experience that we had at the border, the way this custom office says, you have to go and beg them and come and do your work for you and so forth. So you wanted to become yeah, one. To be one of them. So you will come and beg you too. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, when you go to bank in those days, you see a lot of people at the banks. And it's difficult for you to get a service. It was, ah, this job too. I think it's so yeah, yeah, so I... <laughs> and the last one was, um, I was also into this passport if you want passport, I can get you within one day. In those days, really? Yeah, yeah I can get you within one day. I go quickly. We're connection man. Connection man. <laughs> so it, it entices me that okay, if I work at the uh, office, uh, immigration affairs, foreign yes, affairs, okay. yes, then I can get this chance and be doing it because it was very good business too. Yeah. So, but um, I thank God that out of that I got the banking. Mm -hmm, yes, I uh, have. Mm -hmm. And after that, that I traveled to German. And from German, that I made my way to Japan. Japan. Yes. And okay. And we'll end it there because we want to take a commercial break. When we come back, sure. let's find out more about your Japan and German days and how you got to be the, the big Yerata man as you are now. Sure. Sing along, folks. We'll be right back. ASM show. Okay, 
I am Reverend Sami Ejepong. I'm the managing director of Alpha Beta Education Centers Limited. I want to invite you to the Stanford Seed Network Business Leaders Conference, which takes place on Thursday, October the 22nd, 2020. This is going to be an amazing conference. This is the third in a series of conferences that we started having, and it's going to be amazing. We have some uh, very, very fine, uh, experienced speakers. Dr. Otin Jesse, the CEO of Tropical Cable and Conductors Limited. We have Esther Koba, CEO of Stratcom. We have Nana, Dr. Michael Ejekum Ado, the CEO of Mikado Holdings. And then we have David Ofosu Dorte, who is the senior partner of AB and David. We're going to have an amazing time. I want you to visit our website for all the information that you need. We start the conference at 3 p.m. on Zoom, on uh, Facebook, and on YouTube. So you are invited. We're going to have an amazing time. COVID has given us an opportunity to send this out all over the world. Before, we didn't have that opportunity, but now, because of the uh, COVID-19, we are streaming live to all corners of the world. And you are welcome. You are very, very welcome. As we share ideas, it, the Bible says that what? Iron sharpeneth iron. So come and sharpen your skills. Come and listen to these experienced men and women entrepreneurs sharing with us the way forward in these COVID times. You are most welcome. This creek is 055 039 5007.